Two thirds of Americans do not get a full eight hours of sleep, sounding the alarm about what he calls a silent sleep loss epidemic. There are a number of risks to not getting enough sleep. Deficits in learning, deficits in the immune system, reduction in testosterone and estrogen in both men and women. Every disease that is killing us in developed nations from cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, even suicide, they all have significant and causal links to insufficient sleep. Sleep isn't lost time or just a way to rest when all our important work is done. Instead, it's a critical function during which your body balances and regulates its vital systems, affecting respiration and regulating everything from circulation to growth and immune response. Sleep is the fundamental layer of mental and physical health. Sleeping long enough and deeply enough, 80% of the time. Sleep. sleep is this incredible period of our lives where we are not conscious. We might dream, we might twitch, we might even wake up. But in sleep, we are only in relation to things that are happening within our brain and body. Outside sensory experience, in most cases, can't really impact us. And yet sleep is this tremendously important period of life because it resets our ability to be focused, alert, and emotionally stable in the wakeful period. So we can't really talk about wakefulness, focus, motivation, mood, well-being without thinking about sleep. And I think there's probably some really good evidence that sleep may have been the proto-state, that it was the basic fundamental living state. And when we became awake, as it were, we always had to return to sleep. You know, in some ways, at that point, sleep was the price that we paid for wakefulness. And that's another way of describing what sleep is. And in us human beings and in all mammalian species and avian species as well, sleep is broadly separated into these two main types. And we've got non-rapid eye movement sleep on the one hand, and then we've got rapid eye movement sleep on the other. And we can speak about how they unfold across the night and their architecture because it's not just intellectually interesting from the perspective of what sleep is. It's also practically impactful for our daily lives. But I think that by now, most people are aware that getting a really good night's sleep on a consistent basis is critically important. But most people don't know how to do that. Turns out that's governed by two forces. The first force is a chemical force. It's called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule in our nervous system and body that builds up the longer we are awake. So if you've just slept for eight or nine or 10 really deep restful hours, adenosine is gonna be very low in your brain and body. If however you've been awake for 10, 15 or more hours, adenosine levels are going to be much higher. Adenosine creates a sort of sleep drive or a sleep hunger. Your sleep and your wakefulness are the product of kind of the average of a number of different behaviors. How long you've been awake is a key one because of this molecule adenosine. So the reason you get sleepy when you've been up for a while is because adenosine is creeping up steadily the longer you've been awake. And a good way to remember this and think about adenosine is to think about caffeine. It wakes them up. It makes them feel more alert. In fact, some people are so sensitive to caffeine that they feel jittery if they drink it even in small amounts. Other people can drink large amounts of caffeine and not feel jittery at all. Caffeine acts as an adenosine antagonist. What that means is that when you ingest caffeine, whether or not it's coffee or soda or tea or in any other form, it binds to the adenosine receptor and therefore adenosine can't park in that slot. Now when caffeine parks in the adenosine receptor slot, nothing really happens downstream of that receptor. The receptor can't engage the normal cellular functions of making that cell and you feel sleepy. So the reason caffeine wakes you up is because it blocks the sleepiness receptor. And this is why when that caffeine wears off, adenosine will bind to that receptor, sometimes with even greater what we call affinity, and you feel the crash, you feel especially tired. It turns out that sleep is also crucial for your brain with a fifth of your body's circulatory blood being channeled to it as you drift off. And what goes on in your brain while you sleep is an intensely active period of restructuring that's crucial for how our memory works. So adenosine is driving the sleep hunger. When adenosine is low, it's like we're well fed, we're not very hungry. And when adenosine is high, it's like we're fasted for a long time and we tend to be very hungry. 
so that when adenosine is high, we really want to fall asleep. If you want, I'm not suggesting you do this experiment, but you can do it. You can stay up for four more hours than you're used to staying up, and you'll find that you're very, very sleepy. That's because adenosine is building up at levels higher and higher because you've been awake for those extra four hours. However, if you've ever pulled an all-nighter, you'll notice something interesting. As morning rolls around, you'll suddenly feel an increase in your energy and alertness again. And inside all of us is a clock that exists in your brain and my brain and the brain of every animal that we're aware of that determines when we want to be sleepy and when we want to be awake. Just think about it. We don't go through the day wanting to fall asleep every 30 minutes and then feeling like we're wide awake. Our sleep and our period of sleepiness tends to be condensed into one block. That block of sleep and when it falls within each 24-hour cycle is governed by a number of different things. But the most powerful thing that's governing when you want to be asleep and when you want to be awake is light. And in particular, it's governed by sunlight. Now, I can't emphasize enough how important and how actionable this relationship is between light and when you want to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, you wake up because a particular hormone called cortisol is released from your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands sit right above your kidneys, and there's a little pulse of cortisol. There's also the pulse of some, and when I say a pulse, I just mean the release of a little bit. There's also a pulse of epinephrine, which is adrenaline, from your adrenals and also in your brain, and you feel awake. It's very important that that cortisol pulse come early in the day or at least early in your period of wakefulness. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of quality peer-reviewed papers showing that light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day, and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. Again, sleep is the absolute foundation of your mental health, your physical health, and your performance in all endeavors. So if there's one area of your life to really focus on and try and optimize, if your goal is to be happier and more productive and just have a better life overall, I can confidently say that sleep is really the thing to optimize. 99% of the human beings never notice that moment when they're slipping from wakefulness to sleep they will simply go off like that. If they are alert, they cannot sleep. But there is a way to sleep in an alert manner. If you sleep like that, one thing that will happen to you is, your sleep quota, if you are sleeping for eight hours, it will simply drop to three to four hours just straight away. Now that moment when you are passing from wakefulness to sleep, if you can still be conscious that I am not the body and I am not the mind, believe me something, Remarkable will happen. Research had taught us that sleep is actually a process where the brain and the body are quite active. During sleep, the brain filters through information that you learn during the day and it stores it in long-term memory, a process that we call consolidation. To be consistent, so try to go to bed and wake up every day around the same time. Ready your room so that it knows, your brain knows that it's time for sleep. Make it dark, make it quiet, and also some research shows that lowering the temperature of the room can actually help you sleep better. Uh, try to avoid caffeine and alcohol in the hours before you go to sleep and too much fluid intake that'll get you up in the middle of the night. And also put away all sort of stimulating electrical devices, phones, computers, turn off the TV, because those can actually really disrupt sleep. Um, sometimes doing some relaxing exercises, uh, meditation, some light stretching, reading, listening to music, maybe even taking a warm shower or bath, tries to prepare the brain for knowing that it's time to sleep. Good sleep actually helps us age slower as well and keeps us healthy through the year.